Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sermi and I'd like to show you some experiments that I've done with dyeing eggs with natural dyes. And um, here are some examples. So I'll be telling you first the um, basic steps that I went through to dye the eggs. And then after that I'll tell you about four specific dyes that I made. So first step is to boil the eggs and then just cool them in the fridge. Um, after the, you have the eggs boiled, then you also want to boil the different dye stuff. So that could be berries or, in this case, I used hibiscus, you could use turmeric, whatever your different things are that you're going to dye with, you would boil those next. And I usually do that about 20 or so minutes, um, sometimes longer if I need to get a more intense color. After that is boiled, then I, uh, the eggs are cooled and I let the dye bath cool and I will strain the dye bath and then put the eggs into the dye bath. And I leave, I usually do one egg at a time in the dye bath. So, um, for example, um, I use just jars here and I take a, just a white egg, these are already colored, but I take my egg and drop it in and leave it in there for about 10 to 20 minutes. Um, after that, you have two choices. When you're going to um, remove the egg, you can either take it out and put it in a strainer, something like this, and rinse it over the sink. And sometimes that will impact the color that you get, but rinse it with water. Um, after it is rinsed, then I take a paper towel and just pat it dry and just keep doing that until it's all the way dry. And then you can just let it continue drying on here, or you can put it back in the dye bath, the same one or a different one, to get the color that you like. Another option, uh, instead of rinsing it with this, is you can just remove the egg with a slotted spoon and then just dry it without rinsing it. And for some of the dyes, that's important. Sometimes the dyes will wash off with water. Uh, some of these dyes are great for blending. So you can see this yellow, for example. This one is a good um, dye for blending to where I might take the yellow and the pink and get an orange shade or the yellow and a blue to get a green shade. And after you get the colors that you want, then you can take a little bit of oil. And I have here some olive oil. And this is optional, but I, I like the way it looks. So you can take a little bit of oil and just put it on the egg and polish it. And after it's polished, you can once again dry it a little bit with a paper towel. And then you have a beautiful shiny egg. So you can go ahead and do that with your eggs. And if you prefer the matte look, of course, you can leave it that way too. Um, one thing I'll, you might notice as I'm doing this is this egg has two different colors. This is from where it was a little bit wet as it was um, cooling in the fridge and the water collected there and changed the color. So if you don't want that to happen, you could use maybe a different type of egg carton or let it um, cool longer before you put it in the fridge. Okay, and next I will show you the um, four specific examples of dyes. So here are the four dyes that I used today. And you'll notice there's more than four colors, but these all came from four different ingredients. So the first one I'll tell you about are beets. So I took a small beet, about the size of my fist, and I grated it. I boiled it in water for about 20 minutes, and you can see this is what it looked like afterwards, after I had strained off the dye liquid. And I used uh, about two cups of water. And um, with the dye from the beets, as well as each of the other dyes, I added approximately two teaspoons of white vinegar. So just used some of this. And I'm um, sorry, that was about two teaspoons per cup. So for this, I used about four teaspoons of vinegar with it. And the result with the beet, um, just beet, gave this color here or this color here. The important thing to note with a beet is that you do not want to rinse with water. I found that when I rinsed the eggs with water um, after dyeing them that the color went away. So patting them dry with a paper towel worked much better. Um, next one I have is turmeric and this is just ground turmeric. And for this one I used two cups of water with one tablespoon of turmeric. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's really great for blending. So you can get nice shades of yellow, but you can also um, expand to get green or orange by blending it with other dyes. Next I have the red cabbage and 
Um, here's, you can see I got most of the color out of the cabbage by the time I had finished boiling it. And for the red cabbage, this time around I just used a small amount of the leaves. And so I only got pale blue, which you can see here, like in this one. And I've done it before and got a very intense blue that was a very bold, kind of medium blue. It's really pretty. So using up to a third or a half head of red cabbage with a two to four cups of water will give you a really nice shade of blue. Um, with cabbage, you might get different colors if you rinse it with water versus if you just pat it dry. So you could experiment with that. And then lastly, I did hibiscus. So with a hibiscus, I got a variety of results. So um, this one here is hibiscus and beet. And this is hibiscus as well. Um, this one here is hibiscus. And this is hibiscus with turmeric, which got a green color. And um, with hibiscus, you will notice a difference with if you um, rinse the eggs off with water or don't, you'll notice a difference in the color. So I tended to get more of a gray if I just patted them dry and more of the um, blue tones when I rinsed it, or when I, um, yeah, when I rinsed it with water. And for the amount of hibiscus, I used about a third cup or so of the dried flowers with about two cups of water. Some other things that I've tried in the past that I did not do today um, are blueberries. So just using some frozen blueberries or fresh blueberries, mixing it with some water, boiling it, and making it, I did it like a pretty thick paste of uh, this just blueberry that I mashed up, and um, that gave a really beautiful color. It was kind of a very deep purple, so I highly recommend that. I also think it would be fun to try other berries that are dark, like elderberries. So if you make any sort of elderberry syrup, for example, and have leftover elderberries, that would probably dye the eggs really nicely. And I've also tried grape juice. Grape juice gave a color that was kind of similar to the hibiscus, um, I got kind of a gray. One thing you'll notice too with these naturally dyed eggs is that they often have a variety of shades. So down here, for example, I have this brown color, um, whereas up here is this kind of grayish purple color. So you'll see that, or like on here, I have both brown and green. And sometimes the eggs will change color after they've been in the fridge for a while. So I hope you have fun making some eggs and let me know if you have any questions.